2016 out here on a Roar Reservoir, Roar, Colorado. Uh, I think it's advertised as an 800 acre reservoir, but I'm not so sure that's accurate. It does seem to sweep out that way quite a bit where the dam's at. But it's the only place that uh, is electric motors only that I can find, particularly nearby. It's only 10 minutes from home and uh, we got a nice calm day here to launch the canoe, do some trolling. I wanted to shoot this video and show you some of the canoe mods I made. This is my Old Town Saranac 146. It's a 14 and a half footer, two seater. And it came with a center console. One of the first things I did was decided to get rid of that center console. It was mounted right here where you see these bolts. And it had a little storage compartment in it, basically a waste of room. When my girlfriend and I take the canoe out together, I just sat stuff in it and it really just served no purpose. So I, I, un, I unscrewed it and threw it in a dumpster. And I went and bought a uh, piece of this weather shield, which is uh, the new version of pressure treated lumber nowadays without the arsenic. So it's, it's uh, flower bed and raised vegetable garden safe. And then I went ahead and got a, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but got one of these mounting plates. I screwed that down to the to the board and bought myself a nice high back chair, boat chair. Mounted, of course, the swivel bracket on it, the spring bracket. And it uh, fits right down in there. Uh, you can see I bring some some favorite lures I never want to go without so I seem to bring everything I own sometimes but I got some other general use items in there some bug spray and such and some snacks and some worms and uh, general tackle box there I went ahead and got a hold of these uh, Scotty extenders for my rod holders the other day and since I'm sitting up higher in the canoe, it makes things a lot easier. I don't have to bend down as far to to get to attend to the rods. And of course, they I just pop pop up the extender and swivel it out straight so that I control. Let's see. They're a little stiff when they're new, but so that's how I'll troll. I do a little bit of unconventional thing. I like to troll backwards so I can attend to my lines. Uh, went ahead and bought a neat little anchor, a little three and a half pounder, which I mounted up front here. Use this extra um, rod holder to sort of launch the anchor off, keep it off the, keep it from swaying to either side of the boat. I want it to drop back forth. It comes with 25 feet of line and a little quick boom if it gets windy and I want to just cast and retrieve I just throw the anchor and hope that I'm in 25 feet of water or less here's my girlfriend's idea to get some bath mats I wanted to get some rubber matting of some sort to keep things from sliding around and maybe put a fish down on and just keep generally keep the bottom of the canoe clean from dirt and debris and water spray and stuff like that so these things pull out real nice and they make a nice service to put a fish down on or or just keep the gear from sliding around got this little deck line here dock line excuse me got her tied off for now and use this uh i got this bracket here it's just made by scotty also it's just a big clamp i guess it's designed to clamp onto your gunnel and support another rod holder but i clamped it onto the bench here and uh it's a place to hold my net as you can see, I went ahead and made these blocks quite some time ago um, to mount the rod holders on. I just put two large bore screws underneath here right through the gunnel and, and they make a nice because the four holes just were a little bit too wide for the gunnel. So I made them cleats and screwed them down and they make a nice surface there, a little sturdier too. But the neatest thing I wanted to show you all is, of course, I got my diehard marine trolling motor they're all charged up ready to go and when i first got the canoe a couple years back i wanted to have a way of trolling with it and 
I went ahead and bought this uh, this transom mount, which was designed to sit across your the gunnels and it clamped down with some other clamps that I got rid of. And basically, uh, what I what I wanted to do was figure out a way to put the trolling motor directly behind the stern so that it would ride evenly and I could turn a lot easier. When it's on the side, you're just limited with the rods and things like that, and it just seems to ride a little bit. It lists to, to the right side, so uh, I thought about it, and I looked at these two holes that are Scotty mount, mount brack, uh, bracket holders right built right into the stern of the canoe there, and I thought, well, what can I put to... So I, I looked at it a little bit more, and I, what I realized was these rod holder brackets, which are basically this piece here, but made for just the lower mounted ones they actually support this bracket quite nicely and i used the actual mounting hardware that came with the scotty rod holders and the clamps that this thing originally came on uh the holes actually lined up perfectly with this and so i threw them on there of course i had to come up with a, a back piece for the transom mount so I took a piece of that leftover treated, put some deck screws through the through the ash there and made myself a nice sturdy. Now I have a transom mount that directly behind the canoe. But one of the things that I discovered was as you put a little bit of weight on here, this thing wants to pull up out of there. So I wanted something to secure that down with with but also have some portability that I wouldn't have to keep untaping or clamping or screwing down or any way. So what I decided was I use these zip ties and I tried this the other day and they worked out pretty good. So all I've been simply doing is running a series of zips. It doesn't seem like much, but I'm putting four on here at a time and it, all it needs is just a little bit of extra security to keep the to keep the transom mount from tilting back so it's not like I, it has to be anything structural I'm down in here and so these got these I got this one little connection here lines up pretty good zip tie that in place and that And then these little hooks here, I'm not sure what they put these on here for, but they're another point of tie down here. Of course, I got bags of these things, so only a couple bucks at Harbor Freight or any hardware store. And they work great for various things. So now I essentially have four of these things. Keeping the, and that's not going anywhere, keeping this thing from tilting back. Of course, I got a pair of dikes, and just for aesthetics or whatnot, I can clip them off, but it really doesn't matter at this point. But when I get done today, I'll just snip them all off and, and, uh, and be able to load it back up, climb out of here. One of the other neat things I needed was because I'm sitting way back here in the center of the canoe, as you can see, I got quite a long reach to the trolling motor, especially trolling backwards. So, got this little, I've had this little 30 pound thrust Minkota, and she works well with the canoe because she doesn't take a whole lot to propel. And one of the neatest things I found was this super extendable tiller handle. Minkota makes it, it's all, they come in a variety of sizes. and. But this baby extends way the heck out to like 48 inches or something. So now I've got, it looks pretty ghetto, but I'll tell you what, being able to sit back in that seat comfortably and turn back, look for a line, keeping this thing on course, it's invaluable. So we'll drop the line of the trolling motor. 
down in down in here. We'll go ahead and I drew some lines on the mount obviously so I could find the center of this thing each time. So I just put her there in place like that. Clamp her down. And like I said, that's the beauty of this project was everything is now, including the gear and myself, everything is riding right in the center of the canoe, which makes it a lot, a lot more stable. I can actually stand up in the center of the beam there without too much problem. On calm water like this, it's not a problem. I'll go ahead and snug this right up, right up tight and keep any vibrations down. Okay, and then I simply drop that and when I mounted this, I mounted this intentionally to get this shaft as close to this without having to ride it back too far. And then because of the height of things, I found out the other day I got to drop this thing pretty much all the way down to keep the prop in the water and when I sit down on it she'll she'll ride down just enough to get below. I'm probably going to invest in a 36 inch shaft maybe a 40 pound thruster too just because I think I'm worth it and I'll give me a little bit more giddy up. But right now this is riding on calm water this is where it's going to ride. I'm making all my adjustments now before I get in the canoe so I want this tensioning screw to be somewhat 